all the conversations that I, that I get to moderate, the ones right here at the SAG After Foundation, really are the best because, first of all, look at this intimate crowd, and second of all, nobody is more passionate about acting than actors. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, this film, The Burnt Orange Heresy, premiered at the Venice and Toronto Film Festivals last September. And now that you've seen the film, we're going to have a conversation right now. Uh, my name is Scott Nance, and please welcome the director of The Burnt Orange Heresy, Giuseppe Capitandi. And uh, last time I saw this gentleman face to face, he was clean shaven, but it was right here at the foundation for the square. Please welcome back Clayus Bank. Hey. Uh, you know, th there, is a, there is a timeless feel to this movie. It could have come out in the 50s, the 60s, or, you know, the 20s, the roaring uh, 20s of the 21st century. But uh, first, how did this come about? And uh, you know, why the change of locations from the original source material? Yeah, well, um, shooting in Florida is obviously very expensive. <laughs> and Palm Beach was off limit for obvious reasons. So we decided to move it to Lake Como. Also, I think that the location itself kind of matches the sophistication of the dialogues and and gives that feeling of moodiness and... What other changes did you make to the original book, which I think came well, out in like yeah. 71? 71, yeah. Um, well, Berenice, for example, was a marginal character in the book, while here she's, you know, she's got a proper story. And um, what else did we do? The ending, we the changed ending. the ending. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the theme chords are still there. So mm. we didn't really, you know, mangle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we someone asked, like, you know, what are your, when you're approaching a character like this, or, or any role for that matter, like, in this case, what was your point of connection? Um, with this one, I, I always try to look for something that resonates with myself. So I can, I, that's my sort of vain hope that I can put some authenticity into it by sort of, taking something from myself and putting it in there. And for this one, it was a, um, this very, that he's very sort of, um, he's very ambitious and he, he's, he, he'll go to sort of any length to, to get back into the art world that he's been now kicked out of. Um, and, and, that, and I can totally connect with that, that. I mean, I hope I don't go as far as, as he goes, but... Um, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, we hope. We hope. I'm not. I can't promise anything. Um, no. <laughs> I hope that. But but I am very ambitious. Also, I can totally. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally connect with that thing of being very ambitious. So that was sort of the, the the sort of starting point. That sort of really resonates with me. So, and then obviously other stuff. But. Um, I think that was sort of where it started, yeah. You know, the tone of this film, you know, you, you're really trying to maintain this, like, where is this going feeling really up until the last possible moment. What are the challenges, uh, Giuseppe, to sort of maintain that uh, while you're filming? Well, uh, I mean, obviously most of it is in the script already, so um, the challenges, Challenges are always the same when you do a movie. I mean, it's budget and time, and you know, we shot this in 25 days, which was a bit of a rush. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. We were busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite you contained. You know, it's like four locations and four actors, you know, talking and then killing each other. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings you back uh, to the art world. I mean, after uh, yeah. you're a curator in the square, now yeah. you're a, a critic. Uh, artist yourself in this film like is there a it's, it's a coincidence i'm guessing right no i only do films that are set in the art world <laughs> only i will not work in anything else <laughs> no it is a coincidence but it, it it actually took me a while and then i realized fuck this could actually be the continued story of what happened to the guy in the square because he, he loses his job in a big museum and this one has just lost his job in a big museum oh, for, dif for, for different reasons, but still. But I don't think the guy in the square could, I mean, end up doing what this one does. 
I think he goes to lengths that are perhaps off limits for the other character. Yeah. Well, what kind of conversations did you have uh, between each other in terms of of developing, uh, advancing the story? I mean, it, it, it shot in 25 days. I mean, uh, that's that's it's mighty fast. So, what kind of conversations did you have to uh, be, between the two of you, really, to uh, to sort of you know keep the tone of the film? Well, I, I think one thing that was really important to us was to sort of um, establish that I don't think that he knows at any point in the story that he will end up a killer. I, I, I don't think he knows that he's capable of it. I don't think, and actually I don't think when he whacks her with that ashtray, I don't think he actually means to kill her. He just means to shut her the fuck up, yeah. Um, which works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but I think, I mean, so in that sense, we, we were quite cautious that we didn't sort of put anything in there where you sort of get this feeling that he's like a psychopath just waiting to unfold. I mean, we, we wanted him to be sort of a very ambitious and, but a real Less guy, but not, a, yeah. Yeah. So, but not a killer, no. No. Yeah, there, there's a Hitchcockian element to it of a, of a, ordinary man in an extraordinary circumstance who gets in over his head, yeah. uh, especially with a woman who may or may not be a femme fatale. I mean, Elizabeth Devicki was, was marvelous in this movie. Yeah. Um, and, you know, really keeps you guessing what side is she on up until the last possible moment. So tell me about casting her and working with her. Well, um, as for with class, um, I was looking for somebody obviously very talented, um, but with a look that could have reminded us, uh, you know, the uh, old um, film stars, you know, like Kim Novak or Cary Grant. Uh, you know, that sort of allure that, you know, it's not so easy to find anymore. Because I wanted this film to have that kind of, you know, old school uh, film noir feel to it. So, um, what was the question again? Uh, the other question, <laughs> uh, first of all, the question was uh, casting, which you just answered, but what about working with her? Well, working with her was, re I mean, it was really amazing, but I mean, the thing that really sort of drew me to this in the beginning was actually all those scenes that we have together, because I was like, it's so weird and twisted and fucked up that relationship and I just was like whoa what what's this what's what's happening here and I couldn't wait to just start doing it um, and I didn't at this point I'd, I'd only just seen Elizabeth in the film I hadn't met her so I mean like we, we've talked about this before and it I mean sometimes it can go wrong and sometimes you don't just don't have the chemistry but here it really we sort of connected really really well and and I think we also had sort of a mutual understanding of keeping I mean it's really important that you keep the tension and you don't and and it's always like so who's he and who's she and why should why are they and you need to to balance it so so it's not really it it can't sort of be it has to be set in the mi I mean, in the middle, sort of, that you don't sort of see her or him as the more treacherous character. Or so. I mean, it has to be that you're equally with them, in a way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because yeah. well, you don't want to lose uh, empathy for the uh, No, it's important that you sort of like, I mean, and, 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 and I don't know why she doesn't, why doesn't she just come out and fucking say what she's all about? I mean, then, I mean, that would have saved her so much trouble. <laughs> really, she could have just told me these, that she was from where is she from? Boise, Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota. Fucking hell, man! But no, no, she wouldn't <laughs> tell me. <laughs> well, no, she they, tried. Well, she, she tried. tried. didn't listen. But that yeah. was too late. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But you know that chemistry that you're talking about. I mean, when you get that, it's it's gold. You know, to get that. Uh, oh, yeah. it's, you know, it's it's gold in a you know romantic comedy or a romance, but on a sort of mysterious. Uh, you know, suspenseful movie like this, a Hitchcockian movie, like how, what kind of prep did you have beforehand? With well, Elizabeth very Tiff? little actually. We met at Giuseppe's house in London for a lunch that turned into dinner, that turned into drinks real late. So we sat there for like... I paid for the wine. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and we drank it. Um, so, but we met and that was like, we met and then we went to Italy and we did a read through of the script, yeah, just the three yeah, of us. A quick and one. Yeah. And that was more or less it, in a way. When you have 25 days to shoot, how many pages a day did you shoot? 
Like what were the what was what was the heaviest day in terms of how many pages you shot? I mean, you know, there were dialogue of 10 pages yeah you know, so, uh, but i think yeah. it's also that's that's also the reason why you can actually do it because if it was like 200 little scenes where you had to change the camera and lights for everything then you couldn't do it in 25 days but we there are scenes in there that are quite long and 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 they are dialogue driven so that's i think that's why it's actually possible to do it because otherwise we couldn't have have if we'd had like 10 different yeah. locations and yeah. i mean so that made it easier. That is, it's quite dense because it's actually almost like a chamber play, isn't it? It's like a, a, a quite condensed little thing with with four people in it. Well, you know, we we take questions here at the foundation on these really pretty red cards, and uh, this one is from Akila. Akila, are you here? Uh, well, Akila's question, which goes along with what my next question was going to be anyway, was, I mean, Mick Jagger <laughs> was amazing in this movie. <laughs> And, and, and it's his first movie in like almost 20 years uh, since, um, uh, what was Field? Uh, Man from Elysian Fields. So how, <laughs> why? <laughs> we bribed him. <laughs> Giuseppe knows something about Mick Jagger that cannot come out. <laughs> true, true. Uh, by chance, uh, or luck, really. Um, we heard they was looking for a last role to play. Um, so we sent the script, he liked it, I uh, went to see him in London, which was very unnerving, <laughs> because, you know, Mick Jagger. Wow. Um, but he's actually um, a very sweet and approachable person, so um, it was very easy at the end, no, to work with him. Oh, absolutely, very, yeah. He's, he's really a team player, I was like, I mean, he's just re he was just really there to just do whatever was right for the movie. Um, Even waking up at eight in the morning. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that is something that is apparently something he's not really keen on. <laughs> um, but we made him do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know when um, when you first see him, you go, "Oh, that's Mick Jagger." But immediately uh, you you forget that, and you just get into the role. And that's what a good actor does. You f you forget that you're watching the actor, and you just get into the character. Um, uh, just what did uh, you sort of observe about his technique of acting? Because certainly we've observed a lot of his technique on stage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't, I, I, I don't actually do that, I think. I just do, do go with what, what people do. I don't sit there and think, whoa, that's a very weird technique. <laughs> or, I I just uh, act with whatever comes. I suppose. I mean, I'm 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 not going to be the judge of how he wants to approach it. Uh, um, I think that the, I think the thing that was really cool about him is that he's a fucking um, amazing icon, and he just comes through the door, through the door like any other actor really, and was very humble and was very. It was very important to him to do exactly yeah. what was needed in order to get the story right. Um, and I suppose that is, I mean, if you could, s that's per probably des describing the perfect actor in a way, because that is what you want. I mean, someone who will put himself out there at the disposal of the story, um, do, to do me. Do you, uh, what was it like, like between takes, you know, I mean, did the people kind of like, you know, Oh, Between takes, he got his guitar out, um, and then he went through the whole catalogue of all the Rolling Stones songs. Very entertaining, and and a little bit of a pressure when you only have twenty five days to shoot it. Because shut the fuck up, Mick Jagger. We have heard that song. What about? I mean, Donald, Donald Sutherland is also, uh, uh, you know, I mean. Fantastic yes, in this role. I mean, yeah, I think uh, the role another icon, but for different reasons. So tell us about about working with him. I mean, you know, he's been acting for you know. Yeah, six I mean, decades, it's so. not that you really direct Donna Sutherland. You know, he's Donna Sutherland. He's gonna <laughs> slap your face. Um, <laughs> but you talk to him before, and and you talk about the character, how you see it, how you would like it to be, and um, and then you know, it's not that you go there and say, can you. Do this tiny bit bigger? No, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. So. Lake Como really, it, 
you took really good advantage of the change in location. Lake Como really felt like a character in the film, mm -hmm. almost like Vienna in The Third Man. Uh, it, what was it like to, to shoot there? And, and was it just like as beautiful as it, it looks it, on the screen? No, it is beautiful. And the, the uh, Lake Como is so steep because it's in between mountains 3,000 or 4,000 meters high. Um, that you rarely get direct sunlight, so it's always very dark, even if it's sunny. Yeah, and and everything. Yeah, yeah, and it thinks it works for the uh, mood of the film. Uh, there's a line that really stuck out at me, uh, only because I, not, not even a month ago, someone had asked me if I thought that film criticism was an art, and I said yes because you know you're you're you are. Uh, then there's this line in the film that art wouldn't exist without criticism. Um, what's your take Which on that? Which is that? true. This is true, right? You, you agree with that? A contemporary art, yeah, for sure. Well, um, I think, I mean, it's all, it's like a big, we all play different parts in this whole big thing. And, and I think criticism is, is uh, as an important part of the whole thing. That's not to say that I'm very good at reading it because I get really upset and offended if someone writes shit about me, but um, I think I mean it. It does. I mean a a, a a good review in 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 terms of has this person actually really fucking seen this? Can actually also I mean sometimes you learn something from it. Yeah, you do. I th I think you do. I mean it's it, it it's when it gets mean and it's like just demeaning or whatever. It's that that. That's of no use, but I mean, I, I, I do think that sometimes I have read stuff where I'm like, whoa, that's interesting. That might actually be something to think about next time. Or I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's like, but I, I also think that, I mean, he just, I, I think there is a quite interesting point that he actually sort of makes in the beginning where he's sort of saying, so this painting, that was just all lies. Is I painted this, it's crap, and we can all see that. And this was only just to tell all of you, just be careful with people like me, because you can't trust us. Yeah, but even that one was a lie. Yeah. And even that was a lie, yeah. But I mean, the thing is that, I mean, with these things, I've, I, I, and I suppose this goes to like any kind of thing that you hear or people to try to tell you that, I mean, trust, trust yourself and you can, you, I mean, just ask yourself, how the, what do I think here? And, and don't trust anybody else. Uh, you know, this uh, the, the, up until the very last moment, the movie does leave you guessing. And what was it like to to really make a film that never tells you, like, you never feel like the, you know what the story is until right before the ending credits? Well, unfortunately, I had read the script, so yeah. I, I knew. You <laughs> did, <laughs> but we didn't. <laughs> but actually, we changed, that's one thing that we actually did change in the script, but also for in the book, because, I mean... Uh, at the end of, of the original script, he goes bonkers in that gallery and he's like, I painted that. And everybody's like, yeah, right. And then he goes crazy and then they call the police and he's taken, yeah. But we thought it was a much more terrible prison to be in if he was left like this. Where you're like, well, no, where he's like, uh, uh, probably the Jagger's character knows everything that, and and he now owns me, uh, and and he has to live with the 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 guilt and the shame and all that shit. Yeah, um, yeah. there's no absolution for James. Absolutely. Exactly, no, 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 no sort of conclusion, no absolution. We thought that was more right. Yeah, st stronger. Yeah, yeah. Real, more real. What are some of the things that you love about making a movie on such a sh such a tight schedule? You know that there's no, you know, there's no nothing. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's that, uh, doing it uh, on during the filming is is not really all that much fun because it's really a lot of pressure. And but now it's like you said a little earlier. What did you say? About like love stories? Yes. So you only remember the good bits? Exactly. So we only remember the good bits now. No, but it's, it's really cool that a, that, that a decent film has come out of it. Because when, when you're there and it's, it's just so stressful and, and you leave and you think, fuck, did we actually get today what we wanted to get? And 
Ah, uh, oh, I've got an idea that I didn't try out, and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, all that. Um, so I think it's a little bit tough to shoot something on a on such a tight schedule. When, when you get to to edit the film, and a lot of filmmakers say that's where they really make the movie is in the editing. Uh, when did you start to feel, or maybe it was during the filming? When did you start to feel like, yeah, I got this. This is, or or even that it was turning out even better than you would hoped. Well, you know, when you shoot, you know. If you're getting something out of the actors, you know you already know. Um, but yeah, then during the edit, of course, you start to see the shape of things, and um, it's usually a surprise. What what surprised you about your actors? Like, what was that? What was the scene that you that you <laughs> shot that you like? Went, whoa! <laughs> oh, many of them. I mean, I was very lucky with the actors. Um, I think they are all terrific. Um, well, I have different scene, favorite scene for each of them. Um, class, for example, um, is the first beginning. You know, the, the lecture it does. It, it, you know, it's just fantastic there. Then it's all downhill. But <laughs> <laughs> Start out and then. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he really got what I wanted, and you know, he keeps repeating the same gestures. You know, um, in the rehearsal and in the actual lecture is, is um, unfortunately, is very talented. What, what makes Giuseppe a great actor's director? Um, well, I, I, in the beginning, I was slightly, I was like, whoa, why is he not saying anything? And <laughs> because, I mean, he, he's like, he, it seemed that you really sort of really like what we did. And then you, I was like, don't you think we should do one more? Because I, I, I've got one more idea. And no, 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 it's fine. And then he would just, she said he rolls a lot of cigarettes. So he would roll his little cigarette and go and smoke it. I was like, fuck. But actually, I think I, a couple of times I did say, I think we should do one more. I've got, I, I know there's one, that there's something I want to fix here. And, and after those takes, you said, well, that was a good idea to do that. Because we did get something else. Or of more. Course, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. you also have to balance. No, but it's, but, but, but it's a very, very... No, but I, what I fucking really like about it is that you, you seem to really trust us. And once you feel that, I mean, that's, that's I mean, important. That's the, that's the main thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, as much as I love the guy that did the square, Ruben Östlund, and he's really a good friend of mine, but I had the feeling all the time he doesn't fucking trust me. He, he's like, and, and Ruben has this thing where he does like a hundred takes, so you get the feeling that, I'm not really getting this. Um, <laughs> that's very different with you. <laughs> well, also because we had 25 days, he had 70. Uh, yeah, he had like a lot more, that's true. But um, yeah, and, and you know, that scene, that lecture thing, I mean, the really, I said to Giuseppe, can we please, when we do it, because we were shooting this in Italy and not a lot of people in Italy actually speak English. So I said, can we actually sit people in the audience that understand what I say. And I don't think they were able to find any, because they were all sleeping. They were fucking all sleeping. It's like, whoa, man, this is really, really tough. And I think we shot the actual lecture on the second to last date, and we shot all the stuff in the apartment where I rehearsed it in the beginning. So to remember the whole fucking thing of when I point to what it was like, terrible and they were all just sleeping in front of me they 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 didn't That's like a real life you know they didn't understand a fucking word i was saying and they were just oh my god I, on that day i actually didn't like you so much <laughs> looks like i asked a really good question huh <laughs> i what every film everything every short every tv show everything is different uh there's always things that you're going to learn you're always going to be learning or you're not living you'll always always have to learn so what were the takeaways for you the things that you learned as a director things that you learned as an actor to be very patient with actors <laughs> <laughs> to work fast um, to work fast yeah okay. and well to, to try and have fun i mean you know it's not like open heart surgery you know it's it's a film so you should have fun while making it and i think we had fun yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, what did I learn? I don't know. That you can actually do something really fast and it can turn out quite all right. But it's, it's, um, I'm not very good at, at losing control. I'm, I'm totally a control freak. I just want to, I, I, I want to sit and watch every take I've done. I want to remember it and want to, I want to phone to seven and say, for, for this scene, you should use mainly take two. Cause that was the only one that was good. I mean, something, I, uh, so I, I, I don't like to, to work this fast where I totally lose everything, all the control. So perhaps, the thing to learn is that that can actually work, but that's not something I'm gonna. I, it's gonna be a long way down the line. I'm, 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 it's not something. I, I don't know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please do spread the word about the burnt orange here. Say thank you so thank much you. for joining us, SAG After Foundation. Thank you, gentlemen.